and Google announcing a tie up together. Um, Pat, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it from the C3 AI angle. I know you follow Google Cloud very closely, so I'm gonna I'll, I'll pitch that back your way a little bit here. So C3 AI, um, interesting company. It's still in its fairly early days, but it is one of the only companies out there that has truly hung its hat on what would be considered enterprise artificial intelligence built for industry. So Tom Siebel, the founder and CEO of C3, um, you know he's pretty much a legend in CRM. That's what you probably know him for, Siebel Systems, early Oracle days, really being one of the, the, the people behind the development of CRM. Well, the opportunity he's identified is, is effectively that, C, that AI is not going to be a, so much a technology layer driven by IT, but it's going to be a business layer driven by the data science side that's going to be early supporting some of the most highly regulated industries, defense, aerospace, oil and gas, um, and, and uh, financial sector, healthcare. You have massive influxes of data in these industries that's scaling exponential on a daily basis that all needs to somehow be managed. You need to create algorithms. You need to be able to do this at scale. And not every company has endless resources to hire mountains of data scientists to actually figure out what are the right things to be checking to get the constant drip of insights from all that data. And that's really what the company is doing is it's building these these prepackaged software suites that can basically do things like, you know, monitoring a field full of sensors in, in, in the oil and gas industry or being able to monitor millions of transactions concurrently for fraud. Well, streamlining this so a bank doesn't have to necessarily build that from scratch, but it can instead turn to C3 AI. Um, only at this time on about a quarter billion dollar a year revenue rate early, but only 98 customers, Pat, 98 customers. And by the way, 200 million of its revenue came from a tie up with Microsoft and working with Microsoft to vertically integrate uh, with its customers. Now it's announcing this Google tie up, which is really interesting. And Pat, I think you follow, like I said, Google Cloud really closely, but with Google's accelerated efforts and investments in growth, I think it could be a really interesting one. And Tom Siebel told me, he said, he thinks it could be as good, if not better, than the Microsoft type in terms of revenue generation for the company. Daniel, um, I wasn't, uh, I was a little surprised about this one. You know, Google is diving very, uh, two things. First off, Google itself is diving in vertically, big time, right? Um, and, you know, why do I, you know, why did it need a partner to do this? Secondly, the sweet spot for Google Cloud is AI and ML and data, right? And that's exactly, and C3 does vertical, big data and machine learning and AI stuff. So I was a little surprised and I don't know if this pretends to maybe an acquisition uh, for C3 AI or, you know, and, and given the work that C3 did with Azure, I'm assuming that C3 isn't locked into using Google technology, right? They seem to be kind of IaaS, independent okay uh so anyways kind of a head scratcher for me uh pragmatically i understand it for both companies it gets google going quicker uh it gets c3 going quicker but then again um they're splitting the revenue maybe <laughs> right uh so anyways uh maybe we'll see how this works out and uh financially for both the companies i wasn't aware that C3 had so few customers, but um, I, I totally, uh, I think I, I get it from their side. I guess I don't understand it from Google's side. So I have to yeah. do some uh, research on that. Yeah, well, it's something maybe we come back to. It's an interesting one, Pat, and I think you made a good assessment. Small number of customers, large revenue per customer. I think one is operating more at the technology layer and one is operating more at the business layer, but I think Google is making some serious investments um, hiring a lot of people into their cloud business with, with great vertical expertise. Kind of reminds me a little bit, almost, I don't know if it's safe to say this, but SAP-esque. You know, SAP has lagged in many ways on the technologies uh, in the cloud migration that some of the other companies have been able to do faster, but has really won by the fact that they've had so much business line expertise um, that it's kept, you know, it's like, where are the decisions being driven, Pat? Is it being driven by the business or is it being driven by technology? And it seems the business often wins when those two compete. Um, but obviously more and more it's symbiotic. Um, like I said, I, I, I think it's one that we can definitely come back to.